definitive expert on the 250cc championship. So, Don, welcome to the Maiden Telecast. Thank you, John. Well, a small field gr uh, gritting up at the moment for the 250cc championship, but in fact, quite a few more to come out from the pits, hopefully. The first leg of the 250cc title this morning was absolutely sensational. It was won by Victorian Rennie Bongers, and second, of course, was 27. That was David Horton from New South Wales, and it was just the most sensational race you've ever seen. But what it's achieved, of course, is brought Jeff Sale now up into the lead in the championship on 115 points from Darrell Beatty, 114. Don Darrell Beatty raced well in the first leg this morning, but failed to finish. What happened? Darrell had a piston seize in the Honda RS 250, and his faithful mechanic, Doug Sharp, has worked like he's never worked before over the lunch break to repair that and get him out on the grid for this race. Well, we certainly saw a reverse of form this morning, or a change of form this morning. We'd expected to see uh, uh, bike, uh, uh, bike 10, Jeffrey Sale, and bike 12, Darrell Beatty, uh, race neck and neck for the championship, but it didn't happen that way. There were a lot of other contenders who likely will upset the results this afternoon. Yes, they could well do, like the, the lap record holder Roy Leslie was third in the first race. Everybody in, during the lunch break was adjusting suspension because there's a line of cement dust on the circuit that's forced everybody out onto a line they usually don't use, and that's bumpier than the line they usually don't use, so it was a bit of head-scratching there the lunch break with suspension settings. 20 laps of the Grand Prix circuit at Oran Park to be contested this afternoon, just on 50 kilometres of racing. It'll take about 23 minutes, and it promises to be sensational stuff. Michael Cole, these bikes are the bikes that are breeding new Grand Prix champions for the world. That's right, John. Uh, anyone with uh, $20,000 can go and go to Yamaha, the Yamaha dealer, and order at what's called a TZ250. Now, it's a, a two-stroke, twin-cylinder, water-cooled in a motor, in a six-bed gearbox, in an aluminium frame, aluminium chassis with mag magnesium wheels. And you can then set out and race with the best in the country. And you can use it as a stepping stone for uh, bigger and better things. Wayne Gardner, for instance, uh, did very well in this style of racing. Well, the bike we're watching at the moment is bike 12, Darrell Beatty. He's the man who seized his engine in the first heat this morning. And he's the man who lost a very handy 12-point lead over the defending veteran Australian champion Jeff Sale to discover that he's now one point down. And Coxie, what's that going to do to Darrell Beatty's head this afternoon? Is he, is he, does he have enough maturity to be able to ride smoothly or will he just go for growth? No, I think the very reason that Darrell is in team Honda in the city combines a lot of maturity with a, with a 19 year old body. He's a, he's a lad with a big future. Well, he's a man who's been discovered by quite a number of, uh, of leading lights of, uh, of talent scouts in Australia, not the least of whom was Warren Willing, who first picked him up. And then, of course, now Mick Smith's got him in Tim Honda. He really is impressive, isn't he? He certainly is. He was in the points in his first Grand Prix at Phillip Island, and he was over renewing a few acquaintances last weekend at the Suzuka 8 hour, just checking on a few factory contracts when he went over there as, well, I guess, bag man for, uh, for Mal Campbell on a tour. Well, there's 26 riders in the points in the Australian Road Race Championship, sponsored by Shell Oils, for these 250cc machines. But there are only two riders, really, who are in absolutely major contention. That's Jeff Sale on bike 10, the yellow bike, to the right of your screen, and Darrell Beatty on the red, blue and white Honda on bike, uh, bike 12, sitting right there on pole position. Almost ready now for a start. Rennie Bongers is on bike 20. You can see sitting beside Sale on 10. Stephen Moss, 14, back in the pack beside them. Flagman waiting for the last of the bikes to get into position as soon as they arrive. He will depart hurriedly. The lights will turn to green. Ready now for a start. And the Shell Oils Australian Road Race Championship for 250cc bikes, it's away. Sale's got the whole shot again, but Beatty's going to do something about that fairly shortly. So it's Sale and Beatty. Beatty on 12. Sale right beside him and elbows the boy out. And Jeff here Sale. Comes Horton. And Horton round the outside of both of them. Horton is just sensational off the start. Well, that was the plan for this race. Get a good start and play it from there, he said. 
David Horton, bike 27. Jeff Sale, bike 10. Darrell Beattie, bike 12. Then comes 20, Rennie Bongers. And out to the outside, 8, Matt Cooley. Virtually a repeat of the first leg this morning. Horton just going from break from the start. All of the bikes being forced to stay wide of that concrete line. It's not quite a repeat there because on the first lap in the first race nobody was ready for it. They were all they were forced wide for a bump and Jeff Sale nearly bit the dust on that lap. Sale now right on the trail with David Horton. Michael Cole, young Darrell Beattie perhaps with now only three laps of practice and two laps of the race behind him would still be a little bit wary of a machine that had seized in an earlier race today. I think he'd be fairly tentative, but uh, once the flag drops, uh, his mind will be on the racing now. I'd imagine, uh, just by speaking to him, he's got the attitude where uh, he'll get into the racing. Sale now down the inside and takes over David Horton. Horton fights back on the outside, but won't do it there. Now Beattie down the inside of Horton as well, so it's Sale and Beattie in the lead. Horton now fighting back on the outside, it's Bongers on the inside of him. One rider down. Oh, I always hate to see that. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? That's at the fastest section of the track, bottom of the main straight. Bike five is Wayne Barris from the Hartwell Club in Victoria, riding for Chris Oldfield Racing. Meantime, back in the lead is Jeffrey Sale, coming up to the flip-flop. Behind him, Darrell Beattie. Behind him now is Rennie Bongers, having come up to third position. Behind him again is David Horton. And then the lap record holder, Roy Leslie and Matt Cooley. Just a flick of a stopwatch to decide the distance between Jeffrey Sale and Darrell Beattie. I got it at 0.7 of a second, but it's probably less than that. I come under the yellow flags down through here as the injured rider is cared for. Waiting now for the ambulance to arrive and still tending him on the ground. This is the big test for the sale brothers, Jeff and Murray. They, Murray came back from Japan last week with a few tricks in his bag that he picked up from John Kaczynski's American mechanic, Bud Axlin. They tried in the first race and using more the wider line over the bumps, mucked them up a little bit, but we'll see if their, their modification of the bike works in this race, or continues to work in this race. Bongers now, third place, and already having had a tentative wheel down the inside of beating as they came off the bridge. Leslie now, moving down underneath Horton, can't do it. And they come up to the start-finish line in a time of 1 minute 17.06 seconds against the lap record of 1 minute 14.7. An indication, obviously, of their caution under this yellow flag. And a, and a small allowance too for the wind, which is very dodgy at the fast left hand in the main straight yes, and also off the bridge. It's knocking everyone around, Don, but I see, suspect especially the lighter 250cc machines in the superbikes. Yes. They should have an ambulance down there to that fellow, you know. It's just horrible sitting up here, isn't it, knowing something like that's happening mm. down there. It's where your mother and father you know, goes through, go through the wall, looking something like that. Wayne Gardner's parents apparently uh, do it pretty hard, hard too. Back to the race, and in the lead is Jeffrey Sale behind him. Is Darrell Beattie, and then this unbelievable battle of bikes. I mean, this is a motorcycle race. Put, what, three seconds over the top six? Roy Leslie's just done a, bra a brave one underneath. Underneath. And coming up to the back of that field is eight, Matt Cooley. Leslie would have to think he's something spe on a special here. He's won this event at this circuit for the last two years, and he holds a lap record. 
if he could just get through this pack. Absolutely no passing under the yellow flag. Those are the rules of racing. They were quite controversial at Lakeside recently when Rob Phyllis claimed that Michael Dowson had unduly made up time under the yellow flag. That protest, incidentally, has been absolutely dismissed by the stewards, both of the meeting and of the Autocycle Council of Australia. But no passing whatever under the yellow flag is just a good, sensible rule. Changes Jeff Sales made the suspension between races has worked so far because in the second race he said the bike bounced around so much he dropped back in the second half of the race out of sheer tightness trying to hold on to the motorcycle. Beattie looks for a run up the inside. Sale already has the corner covered. The man is an absolute expert. It'll be interesting once they come onto the straight to see uh, how the Honda compares to Jeff Sales' Yamaha. Yes, it's been a been a a real challenge to the Sale Brothers this year. They know that, that Beattie's got quite a good motorcycle and they've tried contacts around the world, their own knowledge, lots of ideas, running with the power valves wide, full open, for example. And it looks um, like everybody else's motorcycle is going just as well. Beattie now tries for an inside run on Sale, but just look at the way Sale does. He eases his way across. It wasn't a slam of the door, was it? It was just sort of a gentle closing of the gate, really. Jeffrey's done uh, a number of years over in, over in the European circuits. Uh, many, quite a, quite a num number of times he's ended up on the rostrum uh, on Grand Prix events, so uh, at uh, famous events. Assen, I think he was third in uh, around about 1980 in the 250 Grand Prix. He's a very experienced rider. And a point was made to me by Peter Campbell, the ex national sidecar race racer recently, but Jeff was one of the few guys who's gone over there, race at that level, and come back and got the enthusiasm to do this in the Australian titles. And maybe in four or five years' time, Beattie will, Beattie will thank him for providing such a, a, a benchmark of, to, to measure his own talent against here. That Honda's not as fast in this race, you noticed, uh, Don? I think perhaps with it seizing in the first race, mm. uh, the normal thing would be, you'd be you would jet it up, put a bigger, bigger jet in it, in the carburetors, to make sure it gets more fuel, but of course that knocks a bit of the horsepower, but at least it'll, uh, hopefully it's a safe way. Mm. Hopefully it'll stay together. Mind you, it's the only Honda, all the rest of those bikes there are all Yamahas, and he's the lone Honda. And the psychology of putting Darrell Beattie into this class one was because he was too good a talent to, to leave to somebody else to sign, but also to uh, show to the buyers of these class of bikes that the Honda's a good package to buy for next year. Do you know how much uh, a Honda is, Don? A, I, they're about the same price as the Yamaha. You, can, uh, you probably have to pay a little bit, you don't get quite as big a spares kit. Right. You well, he's just, done it. He's done it, he's done it, but he's done it. It's over the top of the flip-flop and Beattie's done it. He's, oh, oh. And now, yes, Rennie Bonga's also through into second position. Oh. Jeff Sale maybe just a little bit unsettled when Beattie got through him and Bonga's took the opportunity to take over second place. You could just feel the fuse burning down, couldn't you, in the last couple of laps. Something happened, had to happen. Someone had to make the break. That's the great thing about this class. Blink and you're swamped. Sneeze and you're, uh, the whole horde will run over the top of you. Roy Leslie now moves up onto the tail of Jeffrey Sale. Sale goes wide. But still retains his position. David Horton back in fifth position. And in sixth place in this flying phalanx of motorcycles is Matt Cooley on bike eight. See a bit of wheel spin coming out of that corner. It's a very uh, slippery surface there. And of course it's off camber and it's uphill. So the you tend, you want to be able to screw the throttle right to the stop, but you can't. You've got to feed it on very, very slowly. But you saw the big black mark that uh, beat left. It's on the tyres wheel spinning. Isn't it sensational to say you're leaving a big black mark from a 250cc machine? There's a fine line between leaving a black mark and uh, getting loaded in uh, the ambulance, actually. Exactly. Now, Beatty just starts to edge away ever so slightly from Rennie Bongas. As they cross the start finish line, the gap is 0.38 of a second, hardly worth talking about. 
Jeffrey Sale now ranges down the inside of Rennie Bongas. Can't do it because the yellow flag's there anyway, preventing him from making his break. In fact, for the slipstreaming 250s, that yellow flag really is a worry because they just can't pass on the one section of the circuit that they really like to be doing so. Roy Leslie lurking in fourth position, David Horton in fifth. are here for the repeat of the race at Lakeside with Billy against Bongas. It's certainly working out that way, isn't it? Because Bongas is now right on the tail of Darrell Beattie. But look right behind. There's no saying that Jeff Sale is dropping back. Mm. He's right on the pace as well. If anything, the slight gap is opening between Sale and, uh, and Roy Leslie. Renee Bongas on the uh, Jack Walters own, Mick Hone prepared, Yamaha TZ 250, Jack Walters who used to sponsor many riders, famous pa past heroes, uh, Ken Blake, the famous Kenny Blake, Barry Smith, world champion, and now picked up uh, a young fellow with an enormous amount of talent, with a catchy name, catchy name, a lot of determination in this 24-year-old from Maui. 116.15 seconds the last lap. That's 1.3 seconds outside the lap record with an obstruction on the course and a slippery track. To say that these guys are probably riding their 250s as fast as a 250 has ever been ridden around or in park in the circumstances would be an understatement. makes up a lot of ground there yes. through those corners and up up under brakes. There's one of Leno's mentors, this former Australian 500 champion, Glenn Middlemas, and Glenn had never been to the circuit, and one of the things, tips that Glenn passed on was... Bongas, Bongas on the outside, Bongas going for it, the ambulance is gone, he knew it was gone, and he's taken over the lead, Rennie Bongas from Darrell Beatty. That's a very difficult thing to do, to go right around the outside on someone around there. Considering you're doing probably nearly 200 kilometres an hour, uh, that's off there. Sale still holds on to third place from Roy Leslie. David Horton tells Leslie that there's absolutely no cause for worry. He's there, there if he wants to give up Ooh. fourth position. Ooh. Here we go. Yep, set Beattie up on the curb here. He just ran a little wide there in that right hander. See what, uh, one blink, one miss, miss a gear, and the pack will uh, eat you. It's the, uh, often the, the person with zero mistakes wins these races. That's right. By so gate, Matt Cooley falls back off this section. He's now three seconds behind. There goes the Honda. Beatty down the inside of Sale. Sale moves over to the inside. Beatty can't do it. He's got to get on the brakes. Sale still in second position. Challenging Bongas. Well, not necessarily challenging because Bongas is just so good in the braking areas. Beatty down the inside again. Sale takes right across the front of him and takes his wheel out. Ah, and did Roy Leslie get round the outside of... Darrell Beattie. Oh, Mike Luke Seven Johnson is Luke Johnson. A, yeah, having a terrible meeting. Crashed because of a broken main bearing during practice. Crashed the next day because he was blown off, literally blown off the bike. And now he's down again. A guy with a lot of ambition and a well-presented lad who wants to go somewhere in the sport. What's the biggest gap of the race we've seen so far? Lead is Daryl Beatty, Renee Bongas, Renee Bongas, I apologise. Jeff Sale, Daryl Beatty, Roy Leslie, Dave Horton. Uh, 
have a go at this. Pretty up in the second place. But can Sale get back? The perpetual yellow flag is out at the end of the main straight. Now left riders get in the way. 23 is Joan Newham. 30 is Tony Stewart. Probably the worst place for left riders too, Nick. Jeff Britton just got Jeff a little... Britton, uh, 32, yeah. Uh, a little fright. And in the pits is Farron Hoffer with news of the crash rider. Yes, sir, John, the news for Wayne Bars isn't good. He's been taken to Camden Hospital. At this stage, we believe he's unconscious. He's not at all well. But we'll keep you up to date on Wayne's progress. Hope he's OK. But he's been taken to Camden Hospital. Thanks, Farron. Darrell Beattie, second position. Jeffrey Sale, third. Rennie Bongas in the lead. Roy Leslie in fourth. David Horton, fifth. They're now on lap 12. Well, Bongas' aim this weekend was to uh, impress people with a win. He figures that his championship position means he can't win, win a title this year, but he wants to impress sponsors. He's, he has enough of those already thanks to his, his agreement with Mick Hone, to uh, to impress people. Well, he's not done badly. I mean, he started the series this morning in sixth position in the championship, and on the lay by dint of his first win this morning, he's moved up into third place, one place clear of David Horton. The points position as they currently stand are Geoffrey Sale, 115, Darrell Beatty, 114, Rennie Bongas, 75, David Horton, 74, and David Moore, who's not racing today, 72. At this stage, you're starting to get a little weary. These little bikes are uh, quite a handful. Uh, your arms, hands and arms get very tired. Your uh, muscles, your arms pump up, turn pump up, means that uh, your muscles just get engorged with blood and then you seize up. So you've got to try and consciously force yourself as you're going down the straight to let go, let loose of the handlebars a bit, a, bit, a little bit, just to get uh, a bit of relaxation into your body. Petey's Honda now winds up for the run down the straight. He comes down the inside of Rennie Bongas on this lap. Jeffrey Sale also starting his charge. And Darrell Beattie takes back the lead. Can Bongas get underneath him in the biking area? No, he can't. So Darrell Beattie back into the lead. Bongas around the outside. Got to lose time doing that. Jeff Sale has a look down the inside of Bongas. But Bongas doesn't leave the slope. Boy, he's a good rider. This is total commitment off the end of the straight, isn't he? Bit of a twitch coming off the bridge from Roy Leslie. There's a bit of uh, undulation in the, in the tarmac there as you come off the bridge. Of course, you've got the power on. Uh, bit of a bump on the bike. Will he have the power to do something about it? He pulls out of the draft pretty early, in fact, and does it. I was about to say, Jeffrey's getting out of the draft a bit too early to be able to be any chance of doing that, but he was there. Good man. Well, it's the, uh, the apprentice and the master now. Let's see what's going to happen. About double the age, really, isn't there? If you give the Darrell sort of 18 going on 19. What's Jeffrey? 34, 35, so pretty close. But this is the way it's been with Australian motorcycle and all through the years. Jeffrey's tell you that when he started racing, people like Ron Toombs and Kenny Blake gave him advice, gave him someone to, to race against. He even tells a story of riding around the corner at Lakeside against Ron Toombs and Toombs pointing at the line that he should be using. That's called being, being told. Terms, of course, was the same man who in the 1968, I can remember, Grand Prix at, uh, at Bathurst, was having such a good race with someone else that he, when the other person stopped at the top of the mountain, Terms waited for him to catch up. 
so that they could race to the line together. Jeffrey Sale now comes down the inside. Darrell Beatty can't do it there, but look at him, wheels almost locked. Jeffrey's doing a bit of setting up for himself here, you know. His uh, bike's going well, because the Honda is quite fast. Jeffrey's going to have a little look, I think, down uh, each side of Darrell soon. Pressure's right on him, though, isn't it? Because Bongas is right there behind him. And if Jeffrey spends too much time worrying about passing Darrell, he's going to get himself passed in turn by Rennie Bongas. Yes, this is very much the, uh, the, motorcycle, the motor racing chess game now, isn't it? Dare I make this move unless I muck it up and, and three other people pass me. Up the spectator straight coming up to the dog leg or flip flop. The bike's become very light over there. We'll stand over the over the crest of that hill under power. Start on the brakes. Now power on onto the straight. 75, 80 horsepower from one of these two fifties. Not bad from a quarter of a litre. And what would they, what's their weight? Uh -oh. 103, 104 kilos. That's for the this, these what they what call term production. 250 races, the works one's probably scaling 95. And more horsepower. Yes, particularly Pseudo Pons Honda. Yeah. Just a small glance behind him there from Jeffrey Sale as he commits himself to the left-hander just to see how far behind Rennie Bongas might be. The wheel patter from Darrell Beattie's bike. Six years of Grand Prix experience is worth anything. Just to pay off in these next few laps. But you look at a guy like Beattie, Mick, and you, there's very few guys who are given this chance at this age to really press on and make a career in Grand Prix racing, are they? Well, that's right. Uh, I believe probably any one of these fellows uh, behind Daryl are probably worthy of that bike that he's getting. I mean, I don't wish to detract at all from Daryl Betty's uh, uh, talent, but they all deserve a factory bike. Only 1.16 seconds separates these five riders, and it has done so for the entire race, almost 20 laps of Oran Park. That is sensational motorcycle racing. Just to be able to trust those people around you to be able to ride that close, that fast, for that long is really saying something for the ability of these riders. As Jeff Sale has a much different line uh, coming up onto the bridge. And he's probably cursing that cement dust because off the bridge he probably wants to be just a little more to the inside. Mm. This time, Jeffrey just a little bit closer as they come onto the straight. 1.15.27 seconds is the lap. So despite all the oil on the track, they're now down to within half a second of Roy Leslie's lap record set at this meeting last year. So the pace, instead of dropping off... And this is it. This is half a lap to go. This is do it now or don't do it, Jeffrey. So it comes down to this. It comes down to Jeff Sale now being able to bluff him, to be able to worry him, to be able to work him out of his win. And Darrell Beattie has got the Wayne Gardner feel about him because he's cracked open the pace and this very much could be a sub-15 sub second lap from Darrell Beattie because he's turned up the wick to get away from, uh, from uh, Jeffrey Sale just at the point that it's most critical. This is classic Wayne Gardner sprint to the line. The last lap, just go for it and leave your opposition for dead. And here we go, the finish. And it 
is Daryl Beatty. Behind him is Geoffrey Sale. Behind him is Rennie Bongers. And they're elated. They've both enjoyed that race so much. But it's the young 19-year-old from Queenslander, Daryl Beatty, who's won leg two of the fourth round of the Shell Oils Australian Road Racing Championship for 250cc machines. Behind him was Geoffrey Sale, then Rennie Bongers, Roy Leslie and David Horton. Sensational racing from Oran Park this afternoon. We'll be back shortly with more motorcycle action from Oran Park with the second leg of the Shell Oils Australian Road Racing Championship for Superbike.